the study area map um, earlier. Um, all right. <clears throat> Ian, my name's Richard, but we don't have the hand. We can't find it to raise, but I have a couple questions. In the participant box, there's a raise hand button. Open the participant box. Right here. All right. There you go, uh, Richard. Yeah, my couple of questions. I was born and raised down here. I've lived here practically all my life. Um, I do like the idea about the roundabout on Washington. Uh, I live on Washington Avenue at Washington, and I believe you said South Street, or no, excuse me, Athens Avenue. I like that idea. Um, my only concern is I think that the, need, the speed needs to be lowered down. It used to be 35, it got bumped up to 40, but of course you know how uh, whenever speed limits are, people will speed up slightly over the speed limit. So that would need to be uh, slowed down somewhat there, in my opinion. Um, the residential part on Park Marina, I do believe, would still need to have parking along the side of the road. Um, I don't see how we can get away from that. And my last little comment is, um, will any real property be lost, be lost by the um, homeowners on Park Marina or Washington? Was that too fast, or do I need to repeat it? Oh no, no. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Um, um, let's. Uh, no, um, I think I would defer that question to to Trina. Is that um, is that a good pace? Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a, it's a good pace. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as you might um, think, um, I can I can briefly touch on the on street parking. We do. Um, keep the majority of parking along the central area, which is from Athens all the way to Washington. We try to do that, and, but that, that's a valid point that um, on-street parking has to be, you know, it's 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 vital for for properties fronting um, um, Park Marina. Right. I don't see any other hands raised. I can, so additionally with the speeding, um, just a little bit of traffic information here. When we set uh, speed limits, we set it per how fast people are going or required to by law. And Park Marina Drive being wide open um, is kind of prime for people to speed along that roadway. So if we were to put in improvements such as the roundabout just by nature and then the road diet, so constricting the, constricting the traveled way, Doing those things will slow the traffic just by doing that. And then um, ultimately, I would bet that when we were to do our next uh, updates for our speed limits in that area, we would probably see reduced speeds just based on those improvements. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for the add-on. All right, see Dennis. Up next. Um, yeah, I just I just have a question. Am, am I mistaken? But so on the bike lane, is the bike lane going to stop at a certain point and then restart later? I got a little confused there. In our initial concepts, we um, so in the north and downtown, it will be constructed or implementing on the west side. Um, if, when you go um, to the central um, segment, it will be on the um, waterfront side, which is the east side, and there's a little bit of a transition going on um, right at the Athens um, proposed or um, 
roundabouts that we, we create that that transition so that um, bicyclists can safely maneuver through and at the same time you know for commute bike bicyclists they can still keep on their um, um, southbound um, bike lanes on the west side along the res residential uh, houses there does that answer your questions it it does to and now i'm yes. seeing it a little better where we are going to come back over to the west side mm -hmm. to go. Yeah, in one thing if i could piggyback it sure. we have yeah. that slide with the overview of the three cross sections we do so yes. just to explain it depending on which option we're looking at so if we're looking at option one through all three of our corridors you do have the on-street bike lane facility available in the central and su uh, southern neighborhood um, for both directions due to uh, elimination of parking. But if we go with option two, where we do retain the parking on the west side of the street due to the residential na nature of the corridor, you do eliminate um, the bike lane for just part of the seg in central corridor. You do lose the bike lane on the corridor going north northbound. But due to the fact the southern gateway uh, is a little bit wider cross section, you can still retain the bike lane on the roadway. But in all sections, you would have the multi-use trail where both bikes and pegs um, can use the segment. But obviously, depending on your uh, preference, sometimes I know bicyclists or pets don't like to have to share the path because it could lead to some safety concerns. Well, and, and quite honestly, I, the, the, the roundabout with the bicycles and pedestrians becomes a very dangerous situation. I live where the new ones are on Victor and it's, I'm not a roundabout fan. Just put it that way. I'll leave it at that. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, I see David and Scott will be next up. David. Hello, fantastic. Uh, I think this is well, um, well needed. And really the, the traffic calming measures are great. Um, I was just gonna say, so on the residential side, um, the sidewalk will be enlarged quite a bit because currently it's so narrow in many places. Um, so um, if I'm a presuming right, when I see the, the wider uh, bike and pedestrian uh, uh, aspect. And also, uh, having traveled a lot, uh, I don't know if there's a budget in it or if it's possible, but uh, to have some really nice um, modern um, exercise stations, maybe every half mile or so, uh, there's some really innovative one. I just got back from Panama where they have one along the waterfront, the, the ocean, and just fantastic uh, uh, workout stations with innovative uh, weight lifting lever uh, designed for out, outdoor fixed uh, um, position. So all of that's great. I think it's, I think it's great. I'm so glad I logged on to this. Thank you. Um, I would presume that um, part of the allure is to draw, um, you know, some of the locals and those from outside the area to the river, riverfront areas. Um, I manage a business in this, in the Southern gateway portion and the city has had us install and maintain a pathway behind the buildings by the river. Is there any plans to connect those and continue that vision that the city had years ago or a way to utilize that space behind the buildings, but on the riverfront that might be better used than on the street? Let me um, navigate to where are you, are you talking about right underneath the Cypress um, <laughs> app. So there is currently a existing a class one trail um, and there is a pretty good uh, nicely done crossing and we are going to you know build some connections between that so that you can have a connected so I'm, I'm talking about the north side of the bridge so the building north, the uh, commercial build the commercial buildings we've been required to install and maintain pathways back there and and really the only use for it right now is there's there's a lot of drug use um, okay. I, I can answer that a little bit. Um, sure. I'm not super familiar with that, but I, I work with someone up in the parks department and that has come up kind of those trails back there. 
And um, I know it would be nice to connect to those, obviously that is on private property. So that would have to be um, some working together on that when we do go to hopefully in the future, actually make a project out of this. Ultimately, it's most likely gonna be a grant application. Um, but I know there was talk of having like that, that trail. And then there's just the Sacramento river trail system south there, having that connect in nicely to, if we do have this multi-use path on the, um, on the east side of Park Marina Drive. And then the last thing is, is are we going to see increased, um, police patrolling? Um, cause there's really going to be no draw for, for, uh, pedestrians and cyclists unless we can kind of clean up the area a little bit. Um, I, I know having a family myself, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring them down there right now as it is, even with the improvements. Yeah, and I mean, then unfortunately that's an ongoing issue. I know our RPD police department is, uh, is always trying to kind of get a handle on that. Um, so I can't speak to any further efforts on their part just because I don't work in that department, but um, you know, hopefully we'll continue to kind of clean up the trails down there and get it to be more of a um, family friendly, you know, facility where people can go and walk and recreate and, you know, visit, so. Yeah, hopefully in the future it'll it'll get better. <laughs> okay. Thank you, um, Marilyn. And next up we have House. Marilyn, please um, unmute yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I've lived in Reading for over forty years, and there's always been talk about development along Park Lane <coughs> because it's such a beautiful view with the river and, and all of that stuff. So um, one of the issues that nobody mentioned anything is how often it floods down there. So mm -hmm. it would be hard to attract people if they knew all the information that, you know, they might build some beautiful facility or building or whatever to find out that it's halfway underwater uh, every so often. So is there any kind of planning for flood control, retaining walls, something like that? Well, so for for this project uh, in particular, we're only talking about um, the pavement um, between the curbs, which is in the public right away area along Park Marion Corridor. Um, but I'll also defer that question to, to Shelby. Um, yeah, I mean, at this time with this uh, plan, we, we aren't really going to address that issue just because this isn't focused on development or the land use it's this the city right of way and um any improvements we do it's just going to be at yeah, the trail the curb gutter and sidewalk um so we wouldn't do any flood control portion for that purpose for that that aspect thank you um salt house but um did you lower your hands already or um, let's see if I can find you on the list? No, you're not. Um, I don't know if I'm audible or not. I, if you're if you're looking for house, I just rename myself. I'm Aaron. Oh, Aaron. <laughs> so, so, sorry, I don't have the video going. Oh. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, okay, slightly just joining from the last convers uh, last person who was speaking. I like the idea of the riverfront becoming somewhere not only as a trans transportation corridor, but as somewhere where people would want to go and spend time, obviously. So uh, the gentleman who was talking about like the Panama work, uh, workout stations and stuff, like that concept is a great idea because it slows people down and gets people to spend more time in the area. Obviously, they need to be uh, solid, functional things that don't break down and then start to look trashy and devalue that concept. Um, uh, but furthermore, also developing the Kutras Park that's right there that would be directly connected to it um, would be a big thing because uh, the multi-use trail is really going to be, I mean, in my opinion, the, the, the most valuable thing currently until commerce develops. Um, hopefully this all gets the ball rolling for commerce to develop. Um, to that end, and I'm trying to just go quickly here, um, we also want public transportation to have uh, adequate stopping for when commerce develops. That may be a later phase. I'm not sure exactly how city is going to tackle this in as it develops, but um, the idea of slowing people down and enjoying the waterfront 
it is going to be the trigger for commerce to want to be there as well. Um, so all of those things really play into it, the park, workout stations or something similar, um, and then connectivity to smaller trails that would then just get people to stay there, not just pass through. Thank you. Thank you for the good comments. Um, great. Um, so I see Dennis. Uh, Dennis? Yes. I just wanted to know if this is a time we bring up maybe the sidewalk should be very wide, on, especially on the water side, if we're talking about curb gutter and sidewalks. If we're going to plan to do future stuff on that water stuff, on the water side, if that's the time to make the sidewalk wider for pedestrians. So as far as the walkways that you see that's proposed in the plan, we do make it a multi-use path, which um, pedestrians um, and bicyclists can both um, be on it. So, but that is a, yeah, it, it is the right timing to mention that. And uh, I think the team will definitely look into um, possibilities of, you know, um, uh, making plays for, for um, pedestrians. As you can see the, from the presentation Rita gave um, earlier, um, you're talking about this long stretch that's uh, missing sidewalk, correct? Yeah. And yes. So the whole point here is to, enhance safety and mobility for um, bicyclists and uh, pedestrian and in the meantime maintain a good flow of uh, vehicular traffic um, so that is a pretty valid point yeah i like the idea of taking advantage of the waterfront because we have beautiful river going through here in very few places to mm. go and Ian, right now in our current option, we've presented the, the trail is 12 feet wide, correct? It is 12 feet. With yes. a landscape mm -hmm. buffer mm -hmm. for most of the area. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. Next up, uh, I got uh, Chad. Hi, um, thank you. Um, I had a couple questions on the section of the road that looks like you're going to divert the traffic uh, off Park Marina onto Washington, um, kind of circumventing those business access to those businesses or the boat launch that is in between, um, was it South Street and Washington? Yes. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that that area down there. Um, I know. I would probably feel like you're adding to a bike commute in that no the bike lane goes on the other side what exactly is the motivation to to run the traffic through there through through the more residential area rather than keep it where it's at yeah it's a, oh shelby you want to answer that yeah i'll, I'll get get that one. So this was kind of, again, this is all super preliminary. I know this looks kind of crazy right off the bat, but this was just something we wanted to throw out there. Um, we've actually had um, applications before for special event permits for this particular section of Park Marina. And just looking at it, it is, you know, it's right next to the park, it's right next to the river. And if we did close it off to through traffic, um, and either completely close it off or keep it open to buses, it could be used as more of a recreating area. We could have special events there. We could do like a farmer's market there, have it be just kind of a public gathering place. You know, it's kind of like an unknown. So we're just kind of throwing it out there to see kind of how people felt about it. Um, see, like you can, if you like it, if you hate it, you know, right now we're just kind of testing the waters on that. But that was kind of the one of the main um, uh, factors in going into that decision to have that as an option was, you know, being able to utilize that right of way for, you know, bikes, peds, you know, family use, what have you. Yeah, there's certainly a need to 
for for correction and at South and Park Marina. It's a fairly dangerous uh, intersection. But I um, guess that's it. That's the only only part of the plan. Um, in general, I'm open to that. I'm interested in seeing that shared use bike path uh, like we have in other places along the river for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, that would be nice to be able to continue those those kind of tracks. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, uh, Richard. Um, what about the two questions again? What about a roundabout at South and Park Marina in addition to the other two roundabouts you're talking about? That's the number one question. And the number two, I asked earlier, but I think I was too fast on it. Will any real property be lost by the homeowners on um, Park Marina, Washington, anything like that? Uh, the, lot, the second question I can answer to you, we're only doing work uh, within public right away, so there won't be any okay. um, loss of that. Um, first question, can you re, um, help me locate uh, where exactly you're talking about? South and um, Park Marina. South and Park. You said you had roundabouts at... Uh, at yeah. Sorry. So... We have, so again, these are many, um, these are just two ideas of many. And yes, there might be a chance that we could uh, construct a um, mini roundabout right here, um, keeping the through traffic alone, uh, park marina open to vehicular, pedestrian, buses, and, and bicycles. Yeah. Uh, yes. One thing I would like to add about um, putting a roundabout at South Street. The reason we were looking at the other segments is you do have opportunity to encroach into the roadway in order to prepare or design a roundabout. As you will typically see with roundabouts, they take up a lot larger space than your typical intersection would. So mm -hmm. with this, uh, areas like Athens and Village, you do have the right of way and some empty lot spaces in this, uh, that you can encroach into in order to facil uh, facilitate the roundabout without having any negative impacts to the residents. In the case of South Street, if you look at where it is, you have a residential house that's fronting right next to it. And depending on the type of roundabout we try to fit there, um, those folks would may be negatively impacted or the right of way space may be encroached upon in order to facilitate a roundabout. Oh, okay, thank you. This is Mrs. Schnuck, wouldn't that be true uh, even for those that you, where the South Street and Washington roundabout is, aren't those people going to lose some of their property? Um, that one is more of a traffic circle, not necessarily a roundabout. So for that one, it's more of a slight deviation um, as you're making the turn, instead of being a more pronounced roundabout where you deflect the traffic more away and it's a more uh, reduction in speed. So a traffic circle in this case would be less intrusive. And our goal with that South and Washington is you do not want to necessarily uh, negatively impact the right of way and also make it so if it is being used as a heavy left turn movement, the folks making the left turns don't just cut over the traffic that's going southbound. They negotiate the intersection a little slower. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next up, I have Mike. Yeah, hi there. Um, I'm a resident of the residential area there. I've been here about seven years. Okay. And like a lot of what I see in the plans here, um, the area that we're focused on right here in this in the, the park area, I, I don't agree with that idea. I, I just don't see where, I like the idea of the open concept that the city described, that would be awesome to have down there. But I'm wondering if that couldn't be done by a partnership with whoever owns that chunk of parkland right now and divert the roadway in in a more natural way, perhaps, um, just to take advantage of it. So that, that's a piece of it that's current. Second, um, 
being in the residential area there, um, the roundabout that you discussed at the, I believe it was at Athens, uh, mm -hmm. where it intersects with Park Marina. Mm -hmm. um, one of the observations here the last couple of years in the neighborhood is that the amount of through traffic on Athens has dramatically increased um, along with the, the Park Marina in general. And that's largely people that are filtering through on their path to you know, City Hall to, um, you know, all, basically the Cypress area there. That's like mm. a shortcut to get to there. And that I feel would add a, a tremendous amount of traffic to Athens that should be avoided um, to the point where I'd like to look and recommend the idea of closing that off, um, that Athens mm. intersection, um, because it's kind of an unsafe intersection to start with. Um, so, that's my two cents worth. Thanks for listening. All right. Hold on. Um, hey, Ian. Yes. I actually have um, a couple things I'd like to add real quick. If you can go back to the aerial image real quick. Uh, just the Google map? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Right. Just kind of an overall view. Um, you know, like we said, this is really preliminary. And um, I know we've been kind of looking at the concepts we've already laid out, but there was even a couple other options, things we had kind of discussed internally. We had talked about, you know, even putting improvements on Athens Avenue and having that be more of a main, like bike ped corridor through there to avoid the traffic on Park Marina. Um, or additionally, you know, ACID canals right there and they do have an access road. Um, and actually I was able to speak with them really recently, just in the last few weeks. And they would not be completely opposed to having a, a paved multi-use trail going from, um, Ian, if you go north a little bit, from that Sundial Bridge Drive, Butte Street, Park Marina Drive intersection, kind of going there and then sneaking behind the shopping center just to kind of skirt around that whole area and then either continue south or cut back through somehow over to Park Marina. I mean, those were other ideas that we had tossed around too. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that or have any thoughts of your own that you'd like to share that are, you know, even if it's not even related to what we have on here, we just kind of want to hear what you guys think of the area in general. May I add something? I, well, while it would be easy to add path there, I think it, it you know, works contrary to what we're trying to do in Park Marina in, mm -hmm. in bringing folks down by the river and the riverfront. And I, I don't know that with its locale so close to the Sundial and the beautiful Sacramento River Trail that many people would choose to bike down past the canal versus, versus the river trail. Whoops, I'm sorry. I I didn't raise my hand. Um, I've just, I've been around here for years and you know, part of that, of a lot of that property has been under a lease. And so we couldn't follow through and do a lot of things. And so we've been hanging out, waiting a long time. Or is, is all of that kind of stuff being taken into consideration at this time? Um, we do take that into consideration, but for this plan in particular, we really are looking at uh, facility improvements within the right-of-way because we know that's um, something we can definitely plan for and work on and ultimately the improvements you know they should be sufficient for whatever development does happen um, in the near future or the far future you know the uh, road diet proposing that three-lane road section you know I know it's a reduction of one through travel lane in each direction but the volumes on Park Marina right now are such that it, it shouldn't cause a problem um, just based on, you know, how much vehicular traffic you can have until um, you do need more capacity than that travel lane in each direction. So, um, you know, the land use is still kind of, you know, unforeseen. We're not sure what's going to happen if they're in the future, but it's, um, for this plan in particular, we are mostly just focusing on the, on the corridor itself and those improvements. But keeping that in mind so you know if, if a lot happens, because it it's just a great area for us to be able to use waterway, that is, is my take on that. 
I mean, and it's definitely, that's something that can be, um, you know, figured out later as well. If we have our multi-use trail along the roadway, you know, depending on if development happens on that east side, um, you know, that waterway access can be worked in there at some point too. That just remains to be seen. It just depends on what happens. Um, but like I said, right now, we're, we're just trying to make the corridor such that whatever development does happen in the future, it'll still be valid and still be, um, you know, usable. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I see a um, new person, Haley. Uh, hi, am I, I think I'm off mute. Um, I'm a resident of the garden track area right off of uh, Canal Drive. And I just wanted to jump back to the ACIB Canal. I know that it it is secondary to the um, the path that we were talking about, the main path being added with Park Marina Drive. But as a resident, I know that I would love to see that cleaned up and developed in a way where it feels safer to walk it. Um, I would still like to see it secondary to the main one on Park Marina, but um, to make that more usable just for a neighbor aspect, I think would be, uh, would do a lot for the neighborhood um, and make us feel a little safer and uh, especially there's a little bit more light available around there as well. Thank you. Uh, Francie? Hello? Frenzy, uh, Sorry. Yes. Um, I, 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 I want to add my, um, my vote of confidence for the last person's comments, but absolutely the, the focus has to be on Park Marina for one thing, whatever that transportation uh, looks like, I hope will have a lot to do with how the property is developed as, as uh, you know, that goes forward. But I hope that when you're doing the transportation, whatever ultimate decisions you make, you do keep in mind the ability to connect with the canal. I've, I've, boy, I've, I've spent a lot of hours cleaning along the canal with uh, the police department, and it's just it's it's tragic that that isn't an accessible, safe place for our community to use because it's it's beautiful. It's a gift to be able to walk there and watch the ducks and things. And I think at some point we see how many more people are riding bikes and walking now, especially this year. Um, but as more and more people walk and ride bikes and, you know, all those kinds of things for transportation, um, the access on that on the canal all the way to city hall, that, that would be a terrific loop for people who are looking for exercise. And hopefully all those paths will be so busy that we'll, we'll need them all. So I just would like, I hope that you'll be able to at least keep in mind the access to the canal as you're doing, doing the plans on Park Marina. Sure. Thank you. Uh, as of now, I don't see any hands. Um, Bruce, hello. Hello, am I unmuted? Uh, yes. Yeah, hey, my name's Bruce, and uh, I'm, I'm also a resident of the Garden Tract, and I, I use that area. I do walk and bike with my kids on Park Marina, so I know it pretty well. Um, I think I think closing those sidewalk gaps would be great, and I think the trail idea is great. Um, I it can just depending on the time of day get get really busy, especially like uh, rush hour. People even work at five o'clock and such. And I I do share. I think somebody else mentioned the slight concern about roundabouts and crossing, especially where that trail is. But um, it's also hard to cross in general mm. when it's busy. So you know maybe the road diet would help. Um, but I appreciate the attention to it. Uh, I, I, I'm going to echo what other people have said. I'm very curious about uh, what the long-term property development, how it fits in this, but um, 
if that's not what we're talking about today, then uh, that's not. But I do appreciate um, the the trail and uh, the sidewalk completion. I think would be great. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay, I just got a notice from the main room that we have three minutes uh, remaining. So I have two hands raised, uh, Richard and Scott. Uh, so I guess we're gonna finish those two, then we can uh, go back to the main room for report back. Richard? This is, this is Marcia and yeah. Richard is sitting with me. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking Hi. of the heavy flow of traffic, how does this plan incorporate the all of the events and especially with Bethel using the Civic Auditorium that we live directly in the area and are affected every day by what comes in and goes out of that area. How does a, this plan incorporate to ease the flow of that um, of that area? It's it's horrendous and it scares me, but I have to drive it every day. Yeah, we do. Um... Shall be correct. Uh, let me know. Yeah, I, can, I mean, just kind of, it's definitely, yeah, it's a busy roadway. A lot of people use it as a cut through. It's definitely when there's events, it backs up. Um, part of that is just geographical. It's right next to Turtle Bay and the convention center. But with the improvements that we've proposed um, with the roundabouts, I know roundabouts aren't perfect, uh, but some good things about them is uh, it does slow traffic down and whether you're a bike or a ped or a vehicle, you're only looking in one direction at once basically. So instead of trying to pull out and cross maybe three lanes of traffic, you know, you're looking at one lane at one time, kind of getting either across the roadway or through or turning. Um, and then as far as the residents there, one of the reasons we still have that center turn lane in there is because that should help significantly with, um, you know, entering and exiting the roadway because it gives you kind of a place to, to rest, to, to turn in, um, or if you have to bypass some vehicles that are trying to travel through in order to, to exit the roadway and get into your driveway. Um, and then additionally, you know, we have the parking and then we're gonna add a bike lane. So with the improvements we've proposed, the vehicular traffic is gonna be moving further away from the home frontage so that should help with just kind of the overall feeling of, of calm in the area too. My, uh, my question is specific to when you come off of the, up of the 44 onto the sundial to cross over 44 to hit Park Marina, that is the congested area. It's horrifying. I've been, I've been almost hit so many times just trying to get home that I'm, I hope that the plan incorporate some way to alleviate that amount of traffic that comes from that, from the Civic Auditorium, not just for events, but on a daily basis when Bethel is in, in session. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, um, it's definitely busy, you know, uh, we, the volumes, it's kind of hard to work with the volumes because it is, that is what it is, um, but we can, I mean, we do have the ability to look at signal timing because there's a Caltrans intersection there. So um, we could always talk to them about that as well. Um, but it, it does look like we're almost out of time here. Um, but yeah, I can definitely, I will take that, you know, to Caltrans to talk to them about it too, because we have to work with them in that, that area. Thank you. Just, just real quick, that entrance onto eastbound 44, uh, it's not unusual for there to be 30 cars backed up at five o'clock. And, you know, you can imagine with one lane with people trying to go um, west across um, the Sundial Drive and, and, and also get on that, that might really back up and become uninhabitable uh, come five o'clock on a lot of Monday through Fridays. It's awful. And I think that this, the, 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 Consolidation to one lane will just exacerbate that problem immensely. I would agree. Great. So, uh, Hi there. I got cut off. I guess we just forced to be back. Yeah, we were forced to be back. 
Sorry, I hope you saw my broadcast message. I did. I did. I, I, did. <laughs> it's, it's hard uh, to gauge, and I was in mid sentence, so we got broken up. But but that's good. Um, um, first of all, I think we had a great discussion in Group One. Um, hopefully, let's see. Are most people still in the meeting? It looks like there's 80 folks still here. So this is what a great meeting. Um, I want to share my, is it, is it appropriate now, Cliff, for me to share my screen and go to the Google Doc? Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's see if I can make this work. Ah, hold on. Uh, okay, then I can go here and then I'll go like that. And we'll start with group one discussion. Um, Michelle took these notes. We had lots of folks uh, in the room. Should I go ahead and summarize? I've forgotten. Uh, Ruta, are we, let's see. I guess I could just go ahead and summarize this. Does that sound okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so there, we did, we were fortunate to have Cameron, who is associated with the Kutras family, um, who uh, was talking about future development plans for the uh, area along the river that the family owns, and uh, said that there, there are, they are developing plans now for that area, and um, it's exciting to think about some transformation there. There, there was some thinking or some, uh, I guess, um, encouragement that um, the planning that we do for the street should be flexible to accommodate um, new land uses in the future. It's not determined what those land uses will be or what the development actually will be like. And it won't be known probably uh, for some little while because of the um, situation we're in with the COVID and so forth. So, but he, uh, Cameron was there and talked about future development and other people supported the idea of new development along Park Marina. So I think that the, that was generally um, positive. And the, but the, uh, the takeaway is that it should be um, a, a creative and, and flexible solution. Um, there was a question, oh good, Michelle. Um, she put the, the question about the maintenance of the corridor into this general segment here. Uh, up front and uh, the, the corridor will be maintained by the city. The, for the most part, the concepts are within the right of way, the existing city right of way of Park Marina Drive. So the city would be uh, maintaining that. Um, and then regarding environmental review, there, there would need to be some aspect of environmental review done before the project gets approved, but we're not at that point yet. Um, regarding segments, there was a question um, in segment one, which is the northern segment about um, uh, pedestrian bridges. And we've considered, we heard both, you know, pros and cons for the idea of pedestrian bridges, both across 44 and potentially across uh, Park Marina. Um, cost is an issue uh, clearly on, on that aspect. Um, uh, roundabouts, there was a lot of questions and comments about roundabouts. And there was a lot of support for roundabouts, but there were some cautions. Uh, one of the cautions is that um, there's a lot of backup uh, at the current over crossing or um, on ramps onto 44 at the north end. And I uh, want to make sure that the congestion or the backup of the cars doesn't extend all the way down into the roundabout there. Um, we were fortunate to have Janice from the uh, shopping center uh, talking about some of her experience there um, and uh, um, giving her uh, um, feedback on the project. So that was good. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So there's a comment about if there was a safe uh, walking path and bike path that um, many people would choose to go to events walking and biking rather than taking cars. So that might alleviate some of the congestion in the Northern area. Okay, um, for segment two, which includes Kutras Park and the, and the uh, potential um, diversion there, um, 
there are uh, pros and cons of that. And we heard, uh, we did hear though, primarily support for the idea of looking into that idea of a diversion. And uh, kind of coming back to Cameron's point, he made a point that the family, Kutcher's family would like to see um, uh, the diversion explored um, to, for, um, for several reasons, including that it may help with their development plan. So, so that was thought of as a positive thing, the diversion. Um, there was a comment, a specific comment about the roundabout that is shown in the central segment to make sure that larger vehicles don't go up village drive by mistake. That is a residential access drive and if an, a big RV or some semi happened to make that turn at the roundabout by mistake, it would probably be <laughs> unsolvable. So, so there, is, uh, there is some concern about that. Um, let's see. Bruce's oh. time check is 5.55. Okay, um, I'll just mention that there were some concerns about the road diet from several people, a couple at least in our group. Uh, going from four lanes to two lanes. Um, yeah, the corridor is, it's, uh, is doing well right now and is fine and there's probably too much space there, but after COVID and um, um, potentially with new development, uh, that needs to be looked at carefully. So there's a hope, uh, at least among a couple people, that, um, that this project would be able to analyze, you know, the future post COVID seen to make sure that a road diet, the removal of uh, traffic lanes would, would actually work. Um, and with that, there's a bunch of stuff from the chat room that I won't mention, but I'll hand it off to um, group two and I will show the group discussion here on my screen. But um, uh, let's see, who's going to uh, do group two? Ruta? Um, I, yeah, I can, I can um, kind of wrap it up a little bit. So, uh, Cliff, just to help you out, um, there is a lot of things that I could echo to what uh, Bruce just mentioned. Um, first of all, related to accommodating future land use, so having uh, alternatives that are more flexible and can be uh, kind of accommodated in future uh, with respect to land use changes, um, being creative and flexible. Yes, we did talk about pedestrian bridges. Um, you know, that could be one of the alternatives for pedestrian as well as bicyclists. Um, there was an overall support for roundabout, but again, um, echoing the same um, concern that Bruce brought up is what happens to the traffic at Athens when you drop a lane or, you know, just, just to be a little bit more um, careful uh, traffic with traffic perspective that that's all taken into consideration before we make that change. Um, overall, people were um, kind of uh, looking forward to repurposing the cross-section because they do realize that uh, it's a pretty wide cross-section and that could be repurposed so that other modes of transportation could use this facility and kind of make it more walkable and bikeable for uh, other modes. Um, also, um, there was um, discussion of um, converting some of the residential use to commercial if possible um, as, as a land use change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, okay. the, the what overall, segment, uh, Ruta, what segment was that comment? Uh, central. Central, central segment, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a discussion on the two buildings that we have um, that, that could also be kind of rethought about and, um, you know, re-looked into. Mm -hmm. um, don't want to get into too much of detail regarding that, but uh, it's all documented in our notes. Um, uh, also, um, uh, they did kind of um, uh, gave city um, uh, uh, kind of like they, they do appreciate that city is looking into connecting the bike lanes through Sundial Bridge and Butte and taking it to the downtown, uh, downtown area. So, um, you know, it, it was brought up and Melissa kind of said that, yes, there is an ATV plan and we are already looking into it. And this plan is also including that and making sure that that connection is uh, prominent. Um, and I think 
Yeah, they, they just want to, uh, everyone likes the idea of roundabouts, but everyone uh, still wants to be careful of, um, you know, making sure that it's designed well and um, uh, we, we do not um, end up into some design issues. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Thank you. Is, um, uh, well, you know, I'm I'm looking through these notes. These are great notes. It seems like it will be uh, it will be beneficial to post the notes on the web page uh, mm -hmm. after the meeting. I think uh, we might have to clean up spelling and stuff, but we'll make an effort to do that. Um, Ruta, I just wanted to mention. I forgot to mention a comment that somebody made that I thought was important, which is that the roundabouts and any of the proposed improvements should accommodate ADA accessibility, and that even to go beyond normal ADA and enhanced accessibility would be a good goal for this project. And, and uh, vision, people with vision disability was, were, mm -hmm. was actually mentioned as well. So I thought that was a good comment. Um, can we go on to group three? Yes. So it's Who's any Ian? Ian here with, uh, with group three. Um, uh, in the interest of time, uh, just to apply the ones I feel the critical. So, uh, Ian? Yes. Ian, this is Shelby. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump in just real quick. Um, uh, I should have mentioned this earlier, but it's kind of late development in our uh, city process, but uh, better late than never. Um, I mentioned this to room three that I was in. Um, you know, I know we have these, uh, these improvements that we've kind of have proposed for Park Marina Drive, but you know, we had also kind of talked about up in the air the possibility of having more bike and ped facility type things, maybe cut through through the neighborhood itself, not for not to entice vehicular traffic, but just to make it more attractive for um, bicyclists and pedestrians. And then also, as well as the neighborhood, um, ACID canals right there. Typically, in the past, um, they have not been amenable to improvements, um, but I was able to speak with them in the last just a couple weeks here. And they said they would not be opposed to possibly having a path through there um, for at least a portion of it or possibly all the way down to South Street. So I know we're kind of at the end of our, our workshop here, but I just wanted to throw that out there so people know. And then if you have uh, comments about that or concerns or any thoughts, um, just feel free to email me or uh, yeah, respond to one of us. So I'm sorry, Ian. I just wanted to. I and and Shelby, sorry, Ian. This is Bruce, but I, I'll just I'll just reiterate that even with an a, a canal improvement, which would be parallel to Park Marina, but some distance away from it, we would still also be interested in the improvements on Park Marina Drive as well. Yes. Right. So that would be part of. So this proceeds no matter what this uh, Park Marina Drive, but there's this other option potentially for some even better, uh, you know, uh, and separate uh, improvements. Great. Okay, thanks, Shelby. Uh, Ian. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, very quickly in our room. Um, so most, pe most of the people do like the idea of roundabouts. Um, and however, the speed has to be lower. Um, and whatever street parking is available right now should be retained. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, um, there's a question about, um, yeah, there's a, a, a position of, uh, for, for runabouts. Uh, runabouts will be really dangerous for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, the traffic comment measures are well needed and they look great. Um, you know, there's a, um, a very creative idea of, um, you know, that we should have night, um, really nice and modern access stations along the waterfront um, for for leisure and recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me scroll down. Um, all right, uh, uh, there's a question raised about is is this project planning for flood control and simply uh, in short an answer is no, we're only talking about transportation within the public air, uh, right away area. Um, uh, further down, please. Oh, you have a lot of notes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I try to digest it. <laughs> um, uh, okay, is this, is this the time to bring up that the sidewalks sh should be really wide on the water side? And our answer is that we are taking all modes of transportation into consideration as we 
uh, plan this out. Um, so it is a good timing to mention that. Uh, what about a runabout at South and Park Marina in addition to other two mentioned? Mm -hmm. uh, when a real property be lost by homeowners? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Again, we're only working uh, within the public right away. Uh, any, anything else? Although, Ruta, can you expand on that a little bit? I mean, if it is a roundabout, was, was there any, is there any determinant, or would that determination be made in our next steps? Yeah, yeah, that that determination would be made in the next steps. Yeah, okay. And um, actually, since you gave me an opportunity to speak, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they they have. Uh, I did miss one main comment. Is also they wanted us to look into the at the intersection of um, Athens and Park Marina Drive, uh, especially people making that left turn. So if we could do something at that intersection through this project, that would be highly appreciated. Okay. I think that was brought up in our group too. Um, Athens, Athens has been used as a um, shortcut or alternative route. Oh, okay. Um, so yes. And, okay. Uh, Keep going. And further down, canal. Yes, there are po um, positive and negative uh, feelings about, um, you know, constructing the canal uh, path for a pet and bike. Um, and Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, that's pretty much it, I believe. Uh, regarding the heavy flood of traffic, yes, there's a big concern regarding the Highway 44 mm -hmm. on Sundell Bridge, uh, the backups of vehicles, and the uh, team will definitely look into that. And that's pretty much it. That's just the abstract of many, I'll say. <laughs> Wow, wow, those are intense notes. Um, okay, thank you for that. I guess we've run over five minutes. If you will all apologize to that we're running a little bit over, but um, what I can do next is just go back to my show and show, just go to the next steps slide and one other thing. So um, hopefully you all can see this which says that there is an opportunity to take a survey um, online. So if you want to go to the um, website um, and um, I tell you what we, we could do, we could um, email out a um, email to all the participants that signed up for this workshop and put these links in the email so you could click on the link and then uh, it will take you to a map survey where you could put down your ideas or if you there's any issues that you know about. And we would love to get even more information from you there. There's also a questionnaire that you could uh, link onto. And everything will be on the web page. So, and that is a public works web page that's attached to the public works website. And again, this web page link will be one that we can provide to you. You could jot it down or we could provide to you in a follow-up email that we can send to the participants of this meeting. And you would be welcome to send that along to any neighbors or friends that you think should have it. So with that, um, our next steps will be to incorporate input and develop and refine alternatives. And then we'll be coming back to you. We'll notify in a similar fashion for a second workshop um, to discuss alternatives at that time. And we hope everyone will be able to come back and see what we've done and provide additional input at that time. And this is the project webpage here. So with that, I think um, I am done. We are done and thank you all very much for participating tonight. This is a very fruitful workshop. Really appreciate the input. And thanks to all the staff and folks that helped run it. It seems like it went pretty smoothly. Thank you all. Thank you. We'll, Thank we'll you. sign off now. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.